No, that's, that's fine. Okay, Mark. So let's look at these kind of two swings here. Okay, the left hand one was all before. Your right hand one was after. Now we can't see grip pressure, but we have mentioned it a few times yeah. in our lesson just to try and make sure we are holding the club. The way to think of it: if you squeeze something tight, it can't move, and in some ways you kind of can't control it. Okay. We want that club to be able to move around, actually be able to control it in such a way that your arms can move here, move there, move mm -hmm. your body. The second you get tension in your hands, you get tension in your arms, you get tension in your shoulders, now you're locked. Yeah. All that can really move now is just gravity and force is swinging that club around your body. And just, it's going to be up to the luck of the, luck of the gods, really. Okay? Mm -hmm. If we can actually get that club in the hands nice and loose, we can start controlling that club a little bit better. Okay? So the swing before, as you said, set it wiser than that wasn't too bad. Good to about here. Then we started leaning back. Okay, staying on that back foot, head down. Just watch your back knee in this sort of sequence from back here. Now, your knees are kind of levelled off to about here, which it should be, mm -hmm. as your arms are kind of hip to sort of quad high. Now, watch your right knee now. do not really move that much. It sort of just bends forward towards yeah. the goal. Floor. And you look quite kind of tucked up and yeah. quite narrow there yeah. in terms of that movement, okay? Compare that to this one. First and foremost, the back swing is a lot longer because... Oh, yeah. You're looser, yeah. okay? You actually yeah. make this move now. You can turn your shoulders, okay? Now as you start coming back down, again, knees have leveled off by hand sort of hip height. Mm -hmm. Now just watch your right knee. Starting to move. A bit more yeah. towards the left knee, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then look where your swing finishes here now. You're a bit more through, up on yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think at the moment, he's still flat, but he... Is starting to move to where he was and that hip starting to move that is a much more fuller movement yeah compared yeah. to that if yeah. we're going for a full shot now, yeah, yeah. A short shot it's not, not going to be this sort of movement because again if we actually look at how your body is there for me from your left foot up through your knee through your hip through your shoulders a straight line and a little bit of weight on the back foot but it's a little bit more going towards target this one you've got your hip going there top pass going that way just, yeah there's, there's all, all different, different angles and sort of thing this knee's sort of trying to kick him this way it's just you're not in a very sort of natural and comfortable way and you're putting a lot of stress on certain body parts, okay? Uh -huh. And if you play a lot of golf doing that, it's going to eventually trick some kind of pain somewhere along here yeah. and you'll go, whoa. Oh. And that, the, one of the things that, well, I think someone's crying in some ways, you got, I've got golfers I give lessons to, they're popping ibuprofen before they play golf in yeah. case they get the pain. What is that all about? That's not playing golf, is it? No. I mean, yes, if you play rugby, like you used to say, in football, they're contact sports. Injuries are kind of inevitable, mm -hmm. okay? I don't think any rugby player really in all their career has gone through a 15 or a 10 year career and not missed a game because of injury. Just, it's going to happen, okay? But in golf, you shouldn't be getting to the point where you're playing golf where I think, oh, yeah, the bat's going to go against, oh, I'm playing two rounds in three days, I'll start popping off. There's no, oh, well, this is, that means you're swinging it badly in the start place, okay? So if we can get your body functioning better, doing things, I think, really, that if I said to you, here's a rugby ball, throw that at the screen, you'd think, okay, sure. And I think your lower half would never look anything like that from a rugby ball, would it? No. But you've had this mindset prior or after you gave it rugby where you know what to do when you're playing that sport, but someone's told you to play golf, keep your head down, keep your arms straight, grip the club as tight as you exactly. can. And if your arm is bending, you'll go, okay, I'll not bend it. Squeeze, lock. Don't bend. But then it can't move. No, now can't it's move. locked in your chest and your shoulders. Now you can't get any speed. Then you're trying to lunge your body. When you try and lunge your body, you fall back. Keeping your head down, lunge. It's just, it's never going to work. Okay? No. And the problem is, inside there is multiple thoughts. And like I said, probably two thirds of them are a load of rubbish anyway. Oh, they're rubbish, yes, and right. you're going to get worse. That's right. So, uh, the trouble with that is, yeah, yeah. every shot is different. Of course it is, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flip the coin, you might yeah. whatever it happens. And again, there'll be time when you hit the ball straight. Yeah. But when they do go when straight, it's going to be very limited in terms of same. distance, yeah, isn't right, it? Okay? Yeah. You saw with them now, we got from sort of, I think your <coughs> rough average is probably about a few sort of high 20s, but most of your shots are like 35 to 50 with this technique. You had a couple here that were going 87, maybe 90, 86, your last one, okay? You had a couple, I think, pushing to the 90s, so doubling your distance with yeah. the same club. Now, again, we're not going to say next, you'll double it again and again. No, no, <laughs> long it's driving time. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But we should be able to get that sort of seven or eight time there, over 100 yards, which physically you can do that. You have the strength to do that. We're just going to make your swing better. So what I would say in terms of the movement, in terms of homework, should we say, or practice, yeah. okay? Practice that drill at home where the club is on your left foot, okay? Where you just take this hip, slide it towards that left foot there, and then you push the knee back to get this hip to kind of rotate. So what we're looking for is kind of your hips are basically sort of almost fully rotated around there. So when you finish, the chest is facing there, as is the belt buckle. 
Yeah. What we don't want to do is have the shoulder lunging around and the hips yeah. staying quite static, okay? Because if that happens, you put more pressure on your oh, back. Okay. okay, it's how far these go round <coughs> that dictate your shoulders, not just a big lunge with the shoulders. Oh, I'm getting right. around there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing it right? When you do those moves, just make sure I'm going this way now. As I twist through here now, stop, hold. Look at my hips. Am I kind of in a straight? If I'm kind of like this, yeah. You'll feel it on your back, I think, more anyway. And if your arm kind of goes and flings round, you just flung yourself. If I do this now, I'm controlled. I mean, it's like a, like a weight lift and just do it, squeeze the muscle, squeeze the movement rather than fling it as fast as you can. Right? It's got to be under control. It's got to be purposeful. I mean, even the sort of three or four minutes of you doing that there by yourself, you got better at doing it. You can imagine, I would say, the next session, maybe in a week or two's time, if you did that every day, two minutes a day, or two minutes twice a day, four minutes a day, half an hour a week, that will become, I'm not saying yeah. become natural, but it will become more and more you just in your sink. Yeah, sink. exactly. And they get your body moving better and get the function of the body working better, okay? Make sense? Yep. Excellent. Good stuff. Right.